Hello, all my families and communicators. <clears throat> I wanted to talk with you guys today about another set of techniques. So we've already covered modeling, wait time, and an expectant look. And today we're gonna talk about um, communication temptations and sabotage. Um, now sabotage is kind of a mean word and I don't want you to think of it that way. Um, this is all about creating opportunities. So already it's a given. You know your child best and you know what they want before they even start looking for it. You know that um, when they wake up in the morning, they want their breakfast. You know that when they're watching what their favorite show is, you put it on for them. You know what snack they're going to want. You give it to them because you are a loving parent. Um, but we are going to talk about some ways to use those routines to create opportunities for them to practice communicating with you. So when we're talking about sabotage and we're talking about communication temptations, we are doing this with, with an attitude of great playfulness, okay? Um, this, is, this is something fun. This is like a joke that they're in on, okay? So we're not being mean. We're not being big meanies. We're not being a jerk. Um, what we're doing is kind of um, setting up an opportunity for them. And um, another word about that. This is an opportunity for them. This is not a demand placed on them. So this is a chance for them to get to communicate with you. This is not a demand for a performance. Um, you're just creating a little opening of a window for them to step into and practice some of those skills we've been working on. Um, so let me give an example first so that then some of these comments make a little more sense. So an example of a sabotage or a communication temptation would be, it would be something that happens in something that is highly routine, something that they know, and it usually happens the same way every single day. So say every single morning, you guys get up, your kid is hungry, you put a bowl, you put the cereal, you put the cup, you pour them juice, and then you guys enjoy your breakfast. So on this morning that you're gonna sabotage or create this communication temptation, maybe you put the bowl, you put the cereal, you put a cup and you don't fill it with juice. And then you kind of just give a little minute going on about your business like you just forgot. And in that opportunity, you are giving them a chance to notice something different and, and to figure out, again, they're that productive struggle of how they're going to let you know that they want juice. And there are a number of ways that your communicator might communicate this to you. Um, they might stare at you. They might point to the juice. They might grab their cup and show it to you. They might say juice. Um, and you, I am, I am counting on and I am believing in um, your attunement to your communicator. So if your communicator is new at this and they hold up their cup and they show it to you, you might be really happy with that and say, what? What happened? What? And they might hold it a little longer and they might give you a little like, eh. And you're going to say, oh, did I forget something? Did I forget the juice? Did you want juice in your cup? So you're giving them that input of putting words to their intentions. Um... So these are the kind of things that I'm talking about with sabotaging or communication temptations. So I'm going to give you some other caveats and then I'm going to give you some examples of ways that you can do this. Um, so the first thing, again, like the breakfast, is the activity um, that you are picking should be something that they are very, very familiar with. Something that happens almost the same way every single time. 
Um, if it's something new and you leave out a part, they're going to have no earthly idea what you left out. It's not an opportunity for them because they don't know what, what to look for exactly. So you want to choose something that is very familiar, something that they know the steps to, something that, um, will pretty much immediately be like, oh, that didn't go how it's supposed to go. Um, another thing. I would like you to do this in small bursts. Um, you know, maybe you do it once a day. Maybe you do it, you know, feel out your communicator. Everybody, children, grown-ups, everybody has a different tolerance for frustration and sort of a different um, window of tolerance. So because we're not being mean, we don't want to do this till your kid loses their ever-loving mind and is like in a full-on meltdown tantrum. We, we want, we're, we're watching for frustration. We're monitoring. So again, in the example with the cup, if the, if the child looks at you and you're like, what? What? and they hand you the cup, they've, they've looked and they've attempted to repair that communication, like go ahead and model juice and give them juice. We're not gonna pretend we don't know forever. We're just creating that opening. So you want to be um, watching for their um, frustration. We don't wanna make them give up. Um, we don't want them to hate the world and hate you and hate communication. So we're paying real close attention to, to our um, communicator when we're doing this. We're doing this on purpose, okay? Um, so the balance that we're holding is we don't want our communicator to be too frustrated, but we also want them to have enough chances to practice their communication skills because if we're doing everything there's no motivation for them to um, ask for it. Um, so don't be mean, but we're being playful in creating these opportunities. Um, okay, another caveat. Make sure that this is something that your child actually wants. If we are setting something up and... Um, okay, so say for this one. Um, here's another temptation or another sabotage. Say you guys um, usually have... A snack together and you know what their favorite snack is they love famous amos chocolate chip cookies they love goldfish you might get some out and you might start eating them and you might pretend that you don't know that they that they love those cookies um and you are looking for them to um point ask um uh, reach um and then you are gonna put words to that. If your child is using symbols, you are gonna put symbols to that, or you are gonna have, of course, your core board always around so that they can let you know that way. Um, so you're making sure that you're choosing something that your child actually wants because people are not motivated to communicate for something that they don't want. Um, if I was hanging out with one of my friends and they were eating olives, I'd be like, gross. I'm not going to sit there and be like, hmm, how can I let this person know that I too would like some olives? Because I don't like olives. They're nasty. So you want to make sure that what you're using, whether it be toys, food, or drink, is something that your kid is super into. Okay? Um, another thing, I guess a final thing, is if you're wanting to do this with a toy, you might want to make sure that you are playing with it extra, like the days leading up to it. So let's take the example of Play-Doh, right? So I was going to bring my Play-Doh, but it melted in my car. Thanks, COVID. Um, so if you're going to do this with Play-Doh, like every day before you're playing with the Play-Doh, you present the jar, you open it up, you take it out, you roll it out. And so maybe on this day that you're doing the sabotage or you're doing the communication temptation, you're like, yes, let's play Play-Doh. We love to play Play-Doh together. And you put the Play-Doh jar out, but you've taken the Play-Doh out of the jar. So when they open it, they're going to look and they're like, uh, where's the Play-Doh? 
So that is that temptation. That is that sabotage. That is that little moment that you are giving them where they need to let you know something is missing. So those are the opportunities that you are trying to create and they are very powerful. Um, and they, they are super effective at creating and supporting language development because even if your child is not yet ready to ask for that, you know, again, all behavior is communication. So not just words count. You know, we're not maybe just always looking for like, hey, where's the Play-Doh? You know, we're looking at them to try to get your attention and let you know in some way. So that might be pointing, that might be fussing, that might be uh, touching a symbol, that might be, it might be, if you've practiced enough, it might be the word Play-Doh. It might be the word where. Um, all of that is super exciting, but it's a win-win because even if they don't say the word or indicate it, if they notice, you've captured their attention. They are very invested in the scenario, so you can go ahead and put language there. What? What's missing? What's the problem? Is there nothing in there? Is that empty? Do we need something? So either way, you're giving them the chance to practice or you're giving them language into something that they're very much paying attention to, which is great. Um, that's when language is very meaningful to them because they want it. Um, and you're giving them something that they are looking for because they want that Play-Doh because Play-Doh rules. Um, another um, one uh, sort of like that is like if your child really likes to color. You know, so every day for a little while, you're practicing coloring. Oh, it's so fun to color. And then one day you give them the paper, the box of crayons, no crayons in it. You see where I'm going with this? Um, so we've talked about paper, no crayons, Play-Doh, nothing in it, cup, no juice. Another fun one, um, who doesn't love bath time? Um, bath is a very routine time of day. You can... Um, Put your kid in the bathtub, don't put water. Give them a minute. See if they will point to the tap. See if they will say water. See if they'll say what. Um, and you're just creating all these little openings. And again, you don't wanna make your kid insane. So after they make a few attempts, if they're successful, praise them. Oh, mommy forgot the water, she's so silly. We need to put the water in, let's turn it on. Um, and so, so you're praising them. You want them in on this. You want them liking this. You want them thinking, come on, mom. Uh, come on, dad. Come on, grandma. Um, you don't want them thinking, oh my God, I'm never going to get what I want. Um, another sort of version of these things would be, um, silliness. So say you take a sticker and you put it on your forehead or you put it on your nose um, and you're selling this. Like I have faith in your ability to sell this and you're, you're just acting like nothing is happening and you're creating that opportunity for your child to see something out of the ordinary, a sticker, and direct your attention to it. And then maybe you get to put some words to it. Um, you can pull this off, it's a performance, you're hilarious. Um, so another one, and then this is getting kind of long, um, is for example, you get your kid dressed every day. Now it's COVID, so most people are not wearing like pants or shoes, but let's pretend that they were. Um, you might get your kid's shoes and you might start putting them on their hands. And again, it's that chance for them to be like, what are you doing? Those go on my feet. Um, or you could get their siblings shoes and put them on their feet. And you're just creating these opportunities across the day and giving them a minute of them to have a chance to tell you what's wrong, what should be different. And again, it's a win-win because either they take that opportunity or you have their captivated attention and you put language to it. 
So, um, final words. Um, this is sabotage, communication, temptations. The purpose is to build independence, persistence, language. You are funnier and more capable than you think. Um, this should be fun. You're going to be great at this. Um, feel free to send me some videos of you being hilarious and you got this. If you have any questions, email me. Um, otherwise, can't wait to hear about your antics. You're going to be awesome.